good afternoon. Um, um, very happy to be back in BODW. I've been following this uh, conference almost every year, either as an observer or a participant, or as a judge or as a speaker. And I think, um, and it's really great uh, to meet back old friends, both, both from Hong Kong and from abroad, because uh, if you meet every year, I think your conversation can be deeper and more meaningful as we go along. And I think this is a wonderful platform for to promote uh, what is the essence of Asia or Asianness in the field of design. Uh, today, um, since I've got only 15 minutes, I'm going to focus a case study uh, in my own country, Malaysia. Um, it's about color and symbolism uh, in packaging for the Muslim market, uh, which uh, includes, of course, the Middle East, uh, many parts of Southeast Asia, and of course, in China, there's a very huge community as well. Um, now, the products and services for the Muslim market is worth about USD 2.3 trillion uh, dollars a year, and this is in US dollars. Uh, in fact, the, um, the Islamic uh, finance services uh, its value at USD 1 billion and is growing at 15% every year. So it's a, it's a huge, huge opportunity for many designers and entrepreneurs around the world. The interesting thing about uh, products for the Muslim market is that Muslims have to uh, buy these products or to use these services. It is compulsory by religion. In other words, we are talking to a rather captive audience. There is no need to market the concept to the audience. The world Muslim population is 1.6 billion and in China is 16 million. And I think uh, Hong Kong and Taiwan have actually focusing uh, a lot of the uh, ways of uh, new products and new services uh, towards the Muslim population of China. Uh, quite interesting is uh, in today's newspaper, uh, South China Morning Post, uh, 7 December this morning, um, the Hong Kong Financial Secretary, uh, John Sung, uh, has mentioned a dream to turn Hong Kong into an Islamic financial centre. Um, I think he said this about four years ago, but I think the going has been a bit slow because you need to change some laws to enable this to happen. China, Taiwan, Japan, and South Korea are competing with each other to offer Islamic financial services. And um, I was about two years ago called to consult uh, for a Hong Kong logistics company, which is trying to develop Brunei as the center or the hub for Islamic products um, uh, in terms of like beef, uh, in terms of uh, fish, and so on, with a huge production which is going to open in China. So you can see the whole world has actually turned its attention to this uh, huge opportunity, uh, which surprisingly not many people are quite aware of it. Um, Hala Hub is basically, the word Hala is actually uh, quite important. Um, Hala is an Arabic term, uh, meaning it is lawful or permissible. In other words, um, the, the things you eat should be halam for a Muslim. And there are a few rules and regulations. For example, for food to be halam, um, I think um, the animal has to be killed as fast as possible without causing stress or pain to the animal. And I think this is a very universal value, um, uh, which is quite important in our production of food. Um, of course, they do avoid alcoholic drinks, they do avoid uh, pork, which of course all Chinese community can survive without. And, um, and there's a few other things uh, which comes under the, uh, uh, the, the Hala certified food. And uh, all the logos you see, uh, basic uh, Hala certification, which means that when you see this on the packaging, it is considered safe cons for consumption for Muslims. And we are talking about um, uh, food, we're talking about not only food, we're talking about cosmetic, 
We are talking about um, pharmaceutical products. We are talking about uh, personal care products. Anything which is eaten or applied to the body, and um, and for the Muslim, they cannot uh, consume or use any products which is not certified halal. Um, you can see the halal mark on the packaging itself. Um, this is from Pakistan. Uh, and this product was actually imported into Malaysia. Um, and the Malaysian authority, uh, that is the crest of the Malaysian government. Um, and they have tested the product and it has met uh, the HALA certification of Malaysia. HALA certification is a bit uneven around the world. So sometimes I think, uh, I think what the HALA uh, worldwide organization is trying to do is to standardize uh, the, the research, uh, the uh, the certification so that it be uniform. Uh, but right now, uh, halal product coming from some countries have to be tested, uh, like for example in Malaysia, for it to be truly certified. Now, the one question which I've been asked many times is, is green the colour of Islam? Um, if you look back at the history of uh, Islam, if you look at the uh, all the artwork, all the artifacts, all the you know, uh, crafts. Islam is actually very multicolored. It is not particularly green. Um, we have no real emphasis in green in either the arts or the crafts or the architecture. Um, it is also interesting to note that green was a very popular color even before Islam came to the Middle East because you can imagine yourself in the dry, hot desert as you ride your camel, and then you see from some distance an oasis, palm trees and water, and it was green. So green was a representative of shade, of rest for the people who have been riding on the camel for many days. There's water which gives you life, and there's green all around. So green was already a very popular color before Islam came. So when Prophet Muhammad um, united his tribes, and you know at that time in the Middle East, it was almost like the warring states of China. Every tribe was fighting with, with, with each other, and uh, the Prophet united all these tribes together, and he chose green because it was already symbolic for life, and he raised a green flag. And that flag, I think, is a common perception where the colour was so much associated with Islam. And of course, uh, as you can see from the flag of Saudi Arabia, it is green because of that historical uh, incident. And so most people have come to associate green with um, the religion. So if you look at um, the market uh, in, in early products which are specially designed for the uh, Muslim market, and in this presentation, I'm just focusing my attention on the situation in Malaysia, most of the traditional products are green uh, because the, the colour when it speaks to a conservative market tells you that it is um, the Islamic uh, belief in family, in well-being, in community, in togetherness. So that's, that's, uh, that's, that's how it, the association became so closed. Uh, in more modern packaging, um, green is not exclusive uh, for the Muslim market. You find all colours, uh, green, purple, blue, red, no, uh, any, any colours uh, is, is okay for the uh, Muslims. But green al always has a very special place. Now, these three packaging you see contain some sort of a blessed water. You can call it the holy water. The and, and this is a modern product. The green box is something to protect you from black magic practices. Now in Kuala Lumpur, when you come to Kuala Lumpur, you see the, the world's uh, tallest twin towers, you see very modern buildings, you see people have a very contemporary lifestyle. But among the Malay community, they really truly believe in spirits, despite becoming, I mean, despite having embraced Islam, 
the old traditional understanding and fear and belief in spirits is still very much alive. And you get modern products like this, which protects you against black magic. <laughs> Imagine that. So the green packet protects you against black magic. The brown uh, box gives you something which uh, enhances the beauty of women. I'm not quite sure what it is. I never used it before. And the red packet is something to strengthen the bonds between husband and wife. I don't quite know what it is too, but these are quite popular products in Kuala Lumpur. So green is given a very special place because protection against evils and black magic is really the most important uh, thing one can have to enjoy a successful life. If you can see uh, another modern product, this is very typical um, imagery for shampoo. You know, you get all over the world, you get women with long flowing hairs, but the woman uh, on the green bottle has her hair half covered. So it is actually targeting a very specific market because in Islam, it is actually compulsory to cover your hair, although in multicultural Malaysia, um, they are a bit more relaxed about the rule. I mean, you can cover or you don't cover. It doesn't quite matter, although it is actually compulsory in the religion, which you see in Saudi Arabia. And, and the only the green bottle has the women half covered. So it, they, the message is really targeting to a very specific audience. Cat food. <laughs> um, only one line is written in green. And what it says, uh, if I can just roughly translate that line, it is the choice, it is the alternative, it is the alternative choice for Muslim consumers. So what it means is that the cat food has a halal certification. That means you can handle it uh, without fear that uh, it hasn't got pork or it hasn't been contaminated by some of the things uh, which are not, uh, no alcohol, uh, things, uh, the food which is not com contaminated and you can handle it. So, so the most important line and the most important message for the audience is actually highlighted in green. Um, not all products have green, however. Uh, designers, you know, I mean, even when you design for the Malay Muslim market, you play with colours, you play with shapes, but there are certain things which indicate that it is targeted towards a Muslim audience. Uh, one of the most popular is, of course, the use of the, uh, of the grid. Uh, and this grid is very common if you look at mosques and buildings in Islamic lands, the Islamic grid. So um, a lot of designers play with this. Obviously, you can use also a religious icon uh, like the mosque. Um, like I say, actually, um, Islam is actually very multicolored. You know, you got the blue mosque, you got the white mosque, you got the green mosque, and you got the red fort in India. So it is not specifically green. So you could use um, a religious symbol to endorse your product. Another example is, of course, you can use, um, this is a stand uh, where you place the Quran, the holy book, and, and it's another very strong symbol of Islam. Okay. Um, for the more conser conservative market, um, they sometimes use the icon of a holy man. And, and man, these are products for, on the left, uh, on the right, is goat smoke, and on the left is actually coffee beans, uh, coffee. But for very conser conservative Malay, especially in the rural communities, the, 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 the image of a holy man is, is very powerful because it is a very important figure in the life. And somehow, I think they have come to accept that it, they would allow it to be used on a mundane product like coffee bean or goat milk or coconut milk. It's, 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 very, it's quite strange to me. But when you think of the iconography, um, first of all, of course, a holy man, the, the, the name of the product is quite interesting. It's Tok Guru Pondok. Tok Guru is an elderly holy man. Pondok, if you translate it literally, it means a hut. But what it actually means in the rural community is a space, it's a space 
Uh, and it's not an official space, it's not sponsored by the government. It's a space where children learn the holy book. So Tok Guru Pondok is actually a very uh, highly respected and educated religious teacher. So that is basically uh, what it communicates is uh, purity, holiness, cleanliness, pure. What's interesting, you can also read a second message into this, uh, into this icon of a holy man. Most shopkeepers which I spoke in the East Coast of Malaysia, which is a very conservative uh, Islamic state, says the old man actually represents very active sexual activity. <laughs> in other words, it is a symbol of sexual virility. Uh, and in the Muslim community, as you know, a person can have four wives, and for you to grow this old and to be active communicates a very strong message to the consumer. Thank you. <laughs>